it's crazy just being around a, a group of guys that, you know, care about each other. And not, you know, it may not be on the, the deepest level, but it's just on the on the teammate level. So that's something that I, I appreciate. What's up, Browns fans? Time now for another edition of Browns Working From Home. And this time, our guest, Browns third round pick defensive tackle, Jordan Elliott. Jordan, how you doing, man? Pretty good. How you guys doing? Doing very well. It is great to be talking with you here today and just wanted to kind of check in and see, you know, we talked to you right after the draft and now kind of see here we are about a month later, how things are going for you. And obviously you would have been in for rookie mini camp and OTAs and all that not happening this year. So how is this kind of Zoom acclimation going for you to the Cleveland Browns? Uh, you know, it's going well. Just uh, the process, I feel like everyone's handling it well, uh, you know, the coaches are great teachers, so even though we're not necessarily doing walkthroughs and stuff like that, you know, we're still getting effective, uh, you know, just just learning the defense and learning the playbook and, and understanding, you know, where, the, where, the, where this blitz comes from and where this one comes from, you know, just understanding those things. I feel like the coaches do a real good job of teaching those things, so it, it's been a smooth transition. That's good. And your defensive line coach comes over from the 49ers where they had a defensive line that did uh, quite a bit of damage last year. What's kind of that experience been like getting to know uh, Coach Kiffin? Oh, yeah. Coach Kiffin, a great guy, you know, a great coach. Um, you know, he's trying to build a relationship with us. So, you know, that's something that I feel like anybody would appreciate. Uh, like you said, he did come from a dominant D-line. So, you know, he always showing this film just to those guys because, you know, they they really – all right, set a good example of what a good D-line is as a unit, not just yeah. individuals. So that's something that, you know, he emphasizes just us playing together as a unit. And what's it like for you coming into this defensive tackle room where you've got Sheldon Richardson, one of the, the most accomplished veterans in the league. Larry Joby is now a veteran going into his fourth year. Andrew Billings is in his fifth year. So you've got some guys who really have been in the league quite some time around you. How have that? How's that kind of been for you coming in and assimilating with those guys? Uh, you know, everybody pretty good, like people like it's it's crazy just being around a, a group of guys that, you know, care about each other and not, you know, it may not be on the, the deepest level, but it's just on the on the teammate level. So that's something that I, I appreciate. And and really I plan to just learn from those guys, you know. Um I feel like years in this league, you know, you learn a lot of little things that uh, you know, may work for you that may not necessarily work for somebody else. So just learning what works for me uh, from those older guys and, and learning from their mistakes, I feel like that's something that I'm blessed to be in this situation to do. Yeah, that's going to be a good room and a competitive room. And as you mentioned, a lot of experience that you can draw on. Uh, have you gotten any advice from them yet? Maybe from Sheldon Richardson, who's, you know, been in the league for a long time. And by the way, a great guy, very funny guy, which I'm sure you've seen in your meetings. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I never, I haven't really got no advice yet, uh, but you know, I, I look forward to it. I know it's gonna happen. So. Absolutely. What have you been doing to kind of keep yourself in terms of the training? I know a lot of the people we've talked to have said, you know, they're out there getting videoed, sending it back, getting feedback on their technique as you try to adapt to what it is that they want you to do in Joe Woods' defense here for the Cleveland Browns. Right. Uh, I mean, right now I'm just uh, I'm with my trainer uh, in Austin. We recorded, like you said, recording videos and just sending them in. Um, I do. I also do like field work every, like every day, and I mean, yeah, they just critique it. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's not rocket science, you know. <laughs> it's just repetition and, and learning how to effectively, you know, move it in certain in certain angles and and, and and certain leverages, you know. So that's that's all it is. Is are a lot of the techniques that they're that they're teaching you or asking you to utilize in this defense stuff that you did at Missouri? Uh, not. Uh, that's the thing. It's not. It's totally different. I feel like this defense, we a lot more, you know, penetration, disruption. You know, that's that's our goal, and I feel like, you know, that's that's something that I I am tailored towards. So I'm excited about it. Absolutely. After watching some of your tape for our Browns breakdown series where we went in the film room. Yeah, you like to disrupt. You like to get in there violent. And what I thought when I saw it, watched your tape. So movement skills like Aaron Donald for a big guy, you really were able to get around people without them touching you, get to the quarterback. And then obviously when you're wearing number one, you look extra fast and you were, you were closing there. But, you know, how would you describe your style as a defensive tackle? I mean, just honestly, uh, everything that, that um, our D-line embodies, I feel like just that's who I am. I, I'm, I can personify that. So, um, 
just explosive, disruptive, and causing chaos. That's that's what it's about. That's why. I'm, that is what it's about. Getting after those quarterbacks, making life hard for them. And you know, in the AFC North, Ben Roethlisberger is going to be back. You've got the reigning MVP, Lamar Jackson, yeah. Joe Burrow, the number one overall pick this year. So this is a division, and we got our own number one overall pick in Baker Mayfield that is just loaded with quarterbacks. So you got to disrupt them. Otherwise, these guys are just going to be playing pitch and yeah. catch out there. For real. <laughs> it, now, yeah, this it's a blessing, man, just to even be in this position, you know, just – to go out there and just play the game that I love, you know. So that's that, that's something I look forward to getting to sack those guys. So, how excited are you to just get back to Cleveland, be able to get to be around your teammates? Because you're coming from college where you were one of the most dominant players on a big time school, and now here you come to try to assimilate into the NFL. Kind of resets everything, but you don't get to be around the guys. And I know that's what everybody talks about. That's what they love about the game, not just the competition and the playing, but the locker room and being with with your fellow players and, and your peers has that been hard like are you just so eager to get back here and actually get to meet these people face to face I mean yeah I feel like everybody is you know just getting to see you know where our team chemistry is uh, I feel like that's something everybody, everybody's looking forward to but it's until until that point you know it's just about work and just about competing and, and staying focused in any in every in every facet of your life so that's 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 all what it's all about right now all right, so I went through your, your bio in some of these, you know, the draft profiles that people put together. And it said when you were a kid, you started off playing running back in youth football before you got too big and had to go to the defensive line. So in my mind, I'm picturing one of those videos you see that goes viral where somebody's just debo and everybody, throwing them down to the ground. What was it? What was Jordan Elliott, the running back, like? Man, that's crazy. That's crazy how people even know about that. But, like, yeah, um, when I was when I was young, I remember my first game ever playing running back. I scored four touchdowns. Like we, the score was twenty six thirteen because we we didn't really kick field goals and stuff. Yeah. But I never forget. I never forget. Just I wasn't I wasn't necessarily big like weight wise, but I was kind of tall when I was a kid. So I I had some size on me, and and I, they didn't see me as a D lineman at that time. <laughs> so you know, I was just a, a dominant running back. I was fast. I could run. I could juke people run you over so that that was that was my experience as a kid <laughs> so that listen that never leaves you right so maybe you know as you're <laughs> as you get more comfortable with the coaches hey you could put a member of willie in the refrigerator <laughs> perry man we can get you in there no, in the goal line give him the big on the ball i need to save my body as, as much as i can <laughs> you I like hitting people to that's right you're yeah, trying to I hit people to get, <laughs> i ain't trying to get smacked they're gonna cut me <laughs> that's hilarious I, I mean I would I feel like those videos would have to be great of you back in the day and that is funny isn't it crazy though too you mentioned it just how in-depth these people go yeah. in, in their profiles uh, of you guys coming out into the NFL yeah that was crazy that that people even know about that what do you like to do in your free time I know you're I'm sure you're in your iPad you know you're in your your playbook and learning the terminology and all the stuff that goes along but take that aside where we know that's a given you're putting in the work because that's really what Kevin Stefanski demands of you guys. What do you like to do in your free time when you're giving yourself a, a few moments to decompress? So, uh, really, I make beats. That's something that I, I've been doing for probably four or five years. Um, just, for me, it's like a stress reliever. Just setting okay. the mood in the okay. room, you know, just changing the lights. And maybe putting a movie on, a movie on silent or something and just, and just making music. Um, that's something that that's something that I've been doing for a long time. So. That's all I know, really, just football and music. That's awesome. Have you got a chance to talk to uh, Chad Thomas about that? Yeah, I talked to Chad. I sent him a few of my uh, my, my beats. <laughs> yes, yeah. So we're going to probably make a few songs or something. Who knows? That's awesome. The defensive line room coming together. See, that's where you find <laughs> these little these shared things. I like that. Right. Yeah, that's what, crazy. Small world. What would you say? How would you describe your style with your beats? I mean, honestly, it'd be more like uh like soulful, like okay, soulful like rap, like just kind of kind of deeper. The chords and progressions that I use, they're not necessarily upbeat or like happy. More more kind of like just sad. Now I wouldn't even say sad, but just deep, like aggressive. Yeah, yeah, deep and aggressive. Yeah. All right.
All right, well, we look forward. To ne maybe next time we do one of these videos, we'll, we'll, you'll you'll have a beat for the video. We'll drop it in the background as we uh, sure. as we go through this. <laughs> awesome. Well, Jordan, listen, we look forward to seeing you. Maybe getting a running play for you. Obviously, running after the quarterbacks more likely, and uh, getting to hear your beats. I like it. Another a man with many many talents, Jordan Elliott. Thanks for being with us on Browns working from home. Thank you. Appreciate you guys having. Me.